again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I've got a variation on something that I'd done previously, but I like this version so much more. Mm -hmm. It is the Granny Kimono Shawl. Now, previously it was one big sort of rectangular shape at the base, and then there were two rectangles that were then stitched off of that. This method is so much easier. It's just one piece. And if you're using a color changing yarn, it looks fabulous. Now for the example that I made, I used Red Heart Super Saver Ombre. It was about three or four of these skeins at 482 yards. And this is the colorway of Hot Sauce. Mm -hmm. Now, I really like how it came out. It is a little bit heavy though. It's very, very substantial. So I would say maybe use a weight of three yarn if you want something a bit more flowy. Totally up to you by all means. Now with this yarn, I used a size I 5.5 millimeter hook. Now for today's example, I'm gonna be using, this is Lion Brands Ice Cream in the colorway of blueberry. Now this is the Big Scoops yarn. Now I would say you'd probably need, um, I wanna say like two of these, the Big Scoops for a nice full sized kimono shawl. And I'm gonna be using doo -doo 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 -doo, a size H five millimeter hook. This is so easy. Once you get it started, it is only a two row repeat. It's right up my alley because it is the granny stitch and you guys know I love the granny stitch. I love it. Yes, so easy, works up nice and quick and you can make it whatever size you want. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, let's get started. Alrighty, so the first four rounds are going to be your typical granny square. So this is round one. Now, of course, if you want to change the dimensions, you can use a different sized granny square. And I did a little bit of fiddling and finagling initially, and I came up with a four round granny square, which worked just fine for me, um, although you can change that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our slip knot and then a chaining of four. And then slip stitch into the first chain that we created to create a ring. And then chain up three and two double crochets into the ring that we created for our first cluster. That's one and two. The chaining up a three counts as your first double crochet. And we need three more clusters separated by a uh, chain three space. So one, two, three, and then into the ring, three doubles. One, two, three, chain three again. One, two, three, three more doubles. Two, one, two, and three, chain three. And then three more doubles into that ring one last time. One, two, three, chain three. And then to finish round one, slip stitch into the top third chain of our first double crochet. There we go, right into there. Slip stitch. 
and then slip stitch into the next two double crochets and into the chain three space to finish round one. Dooch. And do 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 do. There you go. And that is round one. And then, of course, you can always cinch the tail and sew in your end when you're ready. All right, onwards to round two. Okay, round two. Start by chaining up three. And again, two more double crochets for our first cluster. chain three and three more double crochets into that same corner chain one go to the next corner with three doubles chain three three doubles so one two three, chain three, three more doubles. That's what we do with each corner. It's always three doubles, chain three, three doubles. Okay, chain one, and then into the next corner, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. And of course, also I'm gonna put timestamps in the description box. So if you wanna skip ahead, if you're already familiar with the granny, you can do that. I, I, I won't take it personally, not too much. So chain three, and then three more doubles into the corner. Okay, chain one, and then into the last corner, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. So one, two, three, chain three, and then three more doubles, one, two, and three, chain one, and then to finish round two, slip stitch into the top third chain of our first double crochet. So slip and then slip into the next two double crochets. And then into the chain three space. And that is the end of round two. Now basically what we're doing right now is we're creating the, the neckline Okay, believe it or not, um, the space in between here and here, one of these sides is going to be where your neck is going to rest. Now, this this is not enough, okay? I mean, it, it's about the length of my index finger. That is not enough. That's why we're going to be doing another two more rounds so that we have a good neckline. Initially, I only did one of these clusters as you know, the, the neckline. And I'm like, yeah, no, the, my, my neck is not an envelope opening. <laughs> um, so we shall continue on with round three. All right, round three, we're gonna keep on going in the granny style. So start by chaining up three, and then two more doubles for our first cluster. Chain three. And then three more doubles because this is a corner. Yep, 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 yep. There we go. Chain one, and then into the chain space, three doubles. Okay. 
Come on. All right. Then to get to the last, you know, the next corner, chain one, and then three doubles, chain three, three doubles. Okay, got my three doubles, chain three, and three doubles. All right, pull out some more yarn. Okay, chain one, and then into the chain one space, three doubles. Chain one, and then into the corner, three doubles. Chain three, and three doubles. Come on, there we go. Chain one, into the chain one space, three doubles. Chain one, and then into the corner, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. Also, of course, if you have a rather fuzzy yarn, like um, uh, Karen Latte Cakes, or a homespun type of yarn, a boucle, this would be great because, of course, you're working predominantly into chain spaces, not into actual stitches. So if you've got a funky yarn, this would be right up your alley. So I got my three doubles, chain three, three doubles, and then chain one, three doubles into the next chain space. All righty, chain one, and then again, yes, we're going to slip stitch into the top third chain of our first double crochet. Slip stitch into the next two doubles, and then into the chain space to complete round three. Ta -da! See, we're, we're getting more of a neck width here. A little bit more, though. All right, let's keep going with round four. Okay, round four. Chain up three. Two more doubles to make our first cluster. Chain three. Three doubles. And that's our first corner finished, right there. Chain one, three doubles into the next chain one space. Chain one, three doubles into the next chain one space. Chain one, into the corner. Three doubles, chain three, three doubles. Okay, so I got my three doubles, chain three, three doubles. I chained one into the next chain one space, three doubles. Chain one, into the next chain one space, three doubles. Chain one, into the corner, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. Got caught on there, hang on. OK, 
Okay, so that's two and three. One, two, three. Three more doubles. Chain one. Next chain space, three doubles. Chain one, three doubles into the next chain space. Chain one into the corner. You know what to do. Three doubles, chain three, three doubles. One, two, three, and three doubles. Chain one into the chain space. Three doubles. Chain one into the chain space. Three doubles. Chain one. And then last but not least, into the top of the first double, we need to slip stitch. And then into the next two doubles, slip stitch. And then slip stitch into the chain three space. Ta -da! All right, so now, of course, you can keep going in the same fashion, adding as many rounds as you want to if you want a larger neck opening. This, I think, will do just fine, even though it is a slightly thinner yarn and a slightly smaller sized hook. This will totally work. All right, so we shall continue on with our two row repeat. Um, and I say row, not rounds, because uh, from here on in, we're going to be going back and forth, not completely around. So let us proceed to row five. Alrighty. All right, time for row five. All right, so it's going to be very similar to what we have been doing with a slight difference. So starting off by chaining up three. And then two double crochets to complete our first cluster. Chain three. Three double crochets into the same space. Chain one. Three double crochets into the next chain space. And so on and so forth for not all of the round, but for the majority of the round, this is exactly what we're going to be doing. Three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, and then into the next chain space. Chain one, three doubles into the next chain space. If I can do this, I think I can do this. If I don't end up with yarn tangles, <laughs> which is kind of the nature of the beast, right? Yarn, you're making me look bad. All right, so I got my three doubles, my chain one into the next chain one space, three doubles. Chain one, and then of course into the corners. Three doubles, chain three, and three doubles. Okay, then chain one and three doubles into the next space, and so on and so forth. 
all the way across this bottom row and then continue on this way. But I'm going to meet back up with you around here to show you how to finish up row five. Alrighty, I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I'm almost done with row five. I just continued on in the same fashion and we just need to get up to this last corner here. So almost there, I just need to chain one, three doubles into the next space. And then chain one, and then into the last corner, three doubles. chain three, and three doubles. All right. Now, believe it or not, that is actually the end of row five. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And so from here, we're going to continue on working just in rows, not in rounds. And so this, this opening here, is going to be our neckline and we're going to keep on going in this exact same fashion for as long as you want your you know project to be the, the size of your project um, the only difference is the beginning and ending of the rows like i said it's a two row repeat so i'm going to show you row six and we'll go from there all righty all right, so for row six, going to start off, now ordinarily when doing this kind of a moving up and over, I would chain four, but actually I found that that was a little too much. So me personally, I like to chain up three and I feel that that was perfectly sufficient. Then turn your work and then into the corner space three doubles, chain three, three doubles. So, got our three doubles, chain three, three doubles. Chain one, three doubles into the next chain one space. chain one, three doubles into the next chain one space, and you guessed it, so on and so forth for the rest of this row until you reach the end. So I'm going to do the majority of this row off camera, but like I said, it's really all about the beginning and ending of the repeats of rows five and six that you need to be aware of. So I'm just doing my three doubles, chain one, three doubles, chain one, over and over and over. So easy, I love it. And since I'm in the corner, I've got my three doubles, chain three, and three more doubles. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to do the majority of this row, just go across here and over to here, and then I will meet back up with you when I'm about over here, and then I will show you what to do when you reach this corner. Be right back. All right, so I'm almost done with row six. I've been tooling around, and I just need to get up to that corner again. So I just need to chain one, three doubles into the next space. Chain one, three doubles into the next space. Chain one, and then into the corner space, we're gonna be doing as we normally have, which is three doubles, chain three, three doubles. I was about to say chain one. No, it's three doubles, chain three, three doubles. So I got my three doubles, one, two, three, and three doubles. Now to finish off row six, 
all you need to do is just chain one and do a double crochet into the top of the first double crochet of the previous row. It's a little bit fiddly because I stitched it a little bit tightly, but with a little bit of finagling and persistence, you can do it. There we go. See? Da -da -da All right, so at the very, very end there, it is a chain one and a double crochet into that first double crochet there. And that gives us our space here. Okay. And I, I like I said, I did do some experimenting. A, a chain three works just fine over here. Uh, the double crochet does act as a chain three, but that little extra chain space, I think, makes it look just a little bit better. And so as you can see, our neckline is growing. All right, so from now, we're basically going to keep on keeping on doing a repeat of essentially rows five and six. So um, let's keep going, shall we? But since row five, it was starting in the corner, let's say it's the a, a repeat of, say, like six and seven or something, all right? <laughs> just just to be fair. Um, but yeah, let, let's keep going. All right, let's go. All right, so for row seven, going to chain up three. Turn the work and then into this chain space here, two double crochets. And that's going to make up our first cluster. And then chain one and into the corner, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. Yeah, see on row five, it just, it started in the corner. So yeah, repeating rows six and seven, that sounds better, I think. So three doubles, chain three, and three doubles. Chain one, and then continue on just as we have been. Three doubles, chain one, three doubles, chain one, etc., etc., etc. And every time you hit a corner, just do three doubles, chain three, three doubles. All right, so that being said, just continue on in the same fashion. And then I'll show you the end of row seven. And then, yeah, it's just a matter of continuing on with rows six and seven. So I'll be right back and we shall continue. All right, so I'm almost done with row seven. I just need to chain one and three doubles. chain one, and then in my corner, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. There we go. Okay, now, again, it's all about symmetry. So we have our cluster here. Well, we need a cluster in here, in this space right in here. So just need to chain one and then into this final space here, three doubles. Like so. 
and that is the end of row seven. So then to keep on keeping on for rows six and seven, again, for row six, you would chain up three and turn the work, right? And you would do your three doubles into the next chain one space. Chain one. And then three doubles, chain three, three doubles. And you would keep on keeping on in the exact same fashion. And then, so you have this space here at the beginning. And then, so you would keep on all the way around. And you would end this by doing three doubles into this space. And then you would chain one and double crochet into the top of that last double crochet. And that would, of course, give you a, a space here as well as over here. And then when you start the next round, you would be chaining up three and adding two more doubles into that space for your first cluster. And then you would chain one, three double crochets, chain one, three doubles, chain three, three doubles, etc., etc. But because I like to be thorough to the point of redundancy, what I'm going to do is actually, I'm, do, I'm going to go all the way around and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean because I like to be thorough. I can't help it. And then I'm going to show you how you can do a really simple, nice, clean edge and border for your piece. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm almost done with row six for the repeat and I just need to turn around the corner a little bit. So just need to chain one and three doubles, chain one, and then three doubles, chain three, three doubles, three doubles, chain three, and three doubles, Chain one, three doubles into the chain one space there. Okay, now to finish up row six, get rid of your tangles in your yarn there. Okay, just need to, like I said, chain one and then double crochet into the top of the first double crochet. creating a loop at the end. There we go, our little loop. All right, so then to continue on to row seven for the repeat, chain three, turn the work, add two more doubles next to your first double for the first cluster. And then of course, chain one, three doubles, chain one, and in your corner, three doubles, chain three, three doubles. And yeah, so basically just keep on keeping on with rows six and seven for as large as you want your project to be. Now, yes, I know at the moment it looks kind of wonky and you're probably thinking to yourself, could this possibly work? Well, it did for me. And now keep in mind 
that yes, you have all of this space here. And then you're probably thinking, yeah, but what about this? The, these, these tails that are gonna flop over, over your, your shoulders here, because your neck is going to be in this space here, they are much, 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 much shorter. Well, you know what? Yes and no, because, 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 because of, because of the wonderful things we does. Um, yes and no, because it's only four rows. When you flop that down, it's only one, two, three, four rows, thereabouts, when you flop it down. And so there isn't that much of a difference because this is going to be growing at the same rate that this is growing. So you only have that much of a difference between the, the tails and the back piece. Now, also, another thing is that when you have this on your shoulders, this is going to be more wrapped around your neck. So in essence, it is more folded in half than you think. Okay. And... So this is going to wrap around the, the back of your neck. So don't worry about the discrepancy between this height and how much you have down here, because when you are actually wearing it, it's not an issue. And so as far as how far to go, I would say when you are wearing it, this side to this side should be, you know, when you're wearing it and you have your arms sticking out of these sides here, that it should come to mid arm to about your wrist or so, um, you know, roughly speaking, as far as the dimensions are concerned. And then as far as how far down it goes, I would say to your waist or a little bit lower. Um, stylistically, of course, that's totally up to you. You have your own preferences. I have mine. That's what makes the world interesting, don't you think? All right, so I'm going to finish up the rest of row seven for the repeat off camera. And basically, it's going to amount to um, continuing on with my you know, three doubles, chain three, three doubles, chain one, three doubles, chain one, and then three doubles into this last space here. And then the finishing paste de resistance sort of border row, very, very simple, very clean, very neat, very easy. So I will see you in just a momentito. I'll be right back. Alrighty. So when your piece is big enough, um, obviously it's, this is not the full size, not even for a cabbage patch doll. Yes, I'm dating myself. Um, <laughs> All right, when your piece is big enough, um, I would suggest ending after doing a row seven, although it's completely arbitrary. Um, so basically, all you would be doing is double crochets per double crochet, a double crochet per chain space, and then five in the corners. It's really that simple. I'm just going to show you up to the first corner, and then, yep, you can do the rest. So I'm going to chain up three, turn that work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that is our first double crochet. So skipping this first one right here, because we just did one double crochet into each of the next two doubles. And you know what? I'm using the wrong hook. I have them right next to each other. Sorry. And I know this really doesn't matter, but it does to me. So, so chaining up three and then a double crochet into each of the next two doubles. And then every time you hit a chain space, just go right into the space with a double crochet. And then when you hit your doubles, just double into the double. like so, and then chain space, you're doing a double, and then double, 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 all right, and then when you hit the corners, 
for a nice full corner. Five double crochets. So we got one, two, three, four, and five. Fill it up nice. Then three doubles. And then into the space, one double, and then three doubles, and so on and so forth, all the way around the edge of your piece. Now, what you can do, I mean, of course, there are a million and one borders that you can do. This one, it's very simple, very nice, very neat. Um, now, technically speaking, yes, technically speaking, you could do the continuation of your border down this way and across the neck and up this side as well. You could, however, personally, I would not recommend it only because if you are using a color change yarn, this, if you had a, a line of color going down this way, it breaks it up. Personally, I like how this remains open you know, this line of color here, and you would have, you know, a line of color coming around here. I just, I think personally, it looks a little bit better. Another thing that you can do, options, 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 is if you wanted to, after doing this initial double crochet row, you could then do another row utilizing front and back post double crochets for a more ribbed appearance you would need this row first you know to establish the the pattern so uh, the next row you would do uh, your chaining up of three then a front post back post front post back post etc 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 now the only thing is is that when you hit the corner now in the third, okay, the third out of the fifth, this one right here, you would need to do three stitches. Now, depending upon where you're at, um, say for instance, uh, you know, you've got, see that goes into the actual stitch. So say it's front post, back post, then this one front post, you would need three front post double crochets around this post in order to expand it outwards for it to work um you know otherwise it'll buckle and look funky so you would do say front post back post three front posts back post front post back front back front back front etc etc and then when you reach the next corner you know for argument's sake then it's you know this one is a uh, a back post and this one's a front post, then you would need three back posts. You would need to branch this out three uh, in order for it to be substantial. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I hope so. At any rate, it's hypothetical and food for thought if you want to do something different than what I am presenting here. And then you just flop this down right over your shoulders. Easy, breezy, beautiful. Mm hmm Yep. So listen, guys, I know this was a very, very simplistic sort of like formulaic kind of tutorial, but I love this so very, very much. And I thought hmm, it's kind of a novel way of approaching the granny square by not completing the rounds. You create a really neat shape and a new garment, the granny kimono shawl. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give a little thumbs up button down below. You know I appreciate your appreciation, and I hope you like it when I try new things and try to think outside of the box. So, all that being said, until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now and have a good day.